I'm Tiffany Hogan. I'm a professor at MGH Institute of Health Professions, and I run the Speech and Language Literacy Lab. One of the first studies that I did with my mentor, Hugh Katz, was looking at the quadrant model. So we were we had, a, we had a large set of longitudinal data where we were following children from kindergarten to grade 12. And we knew of our longitudinal data set, we knew children in the data set who had reading comprehension problems. So these children were defined as, as you know, completing reader, reading comprehension assessments and scoring below negative one standard deviation. So they were 85 standard score or below. So what we wanted to do is char better characterize these children who had reading comprehension problems. So what we did is we took that set of children. So if they scored low on reading comprehension, we looked further at their word reading abilities and their listening comprehension skills or language comprehension skills. So the way we characterize word reading was by giving them timed and untimed single word assessments. So the usual suspects, you know, test of word reading efficiency, uh, Woodcock reading, uh, you know, mastery tests. So the basic skills of reading and non-word, you know, real word and non-word reading. So when we looked at those skills, we also compared them to language comprehension skills and language comprehension skills were the ability to answer questions after listening to a passage. So they didn't read it. We took reading right out of the equation. Uh, so they were, you know, asked to answer questions with short pa from short passages that they heard. They, we also gave them some other types of what we call receptive language tasks. So following directions, categorizing uh, words together, um, you know, and also um, being able to reorder, for instance, a story in the correct order. So just understanding how they're comprehending language. So one hypothesis was is that children who had poor reading comprehension would have problems in both of these areas. And we know they're highly correlated in the general population of children. So that was one hypothesis. The other hypothesis, uh, which is the one we really thought would happen based on the extent literature, is that we would find some clusters of poor readers according to either having problems in word reading or in language comprehension. And that's exactly what we found. And this is in line with work that's been done before we did our study, which was in 2003 versus work that's been done since then. Um, so it's all converging on individual differences that lead to reading comprehension deficits. So what we, you know, what you'll see in the quadrant model is we found a group of children who had poor word reading, but good language comprehension. That meant that when we tested them on individual word reading assessments, they were not able to decode words according to what we would expect for their grade level. But if you read a story out loud to them, they were able to understand the story. So when you remove the decoding aspect, they were able to understand spoken language. So this is pretty typical of a pattern you, uh, that we've seen in historically in children with dyslexia. So the hallmark of dyslexia is having a word reading deficit. We also found the reverse and the, or the, I'll say the inverse, we found the inverse. And that is children who had good word reading skills so if you give them that assessment where you ask them to read words, they read them as you would expect accurately and fluently for their grade level. But when you read a story to them or ask them to do language comprehension tasks, they score per poorly. So they're able to read words on a page, but not understand spoken words. Both of these groups of children scored poorly on reading and comprehension assessments. And we even had data to show that there were some children that had the exact same reading comprehension score. So let's say a child A has a score of 80 on a reading comprehension test. A child B has a score of 80. But when you dig deeper, the reason for the reading comprehension deficit is actually quite different. One child is having difficulty, child A, because he can't read the words on the page. Child B is having difficulty because he can't understand the words that are created or the language that's created from the words on the page. This is so critically important for intervention because we wanna make sure that we target the child's weakness while using the strength that they have to help them to become better comprehenders. Now there's another group of children we found and those were children who had poor word reading and poor language comprehension. And that was about a 50% overlap. So 50% of children who have dyslexia also have a language comprehension deficit on top of their word reading problems. And then children who have language comprehension deficits also have word reading problems. So you have, you know, the three quadrants filled out and then you have those who are, you know, good in word reading, good in listening comprehension. And those children didn't have reading comprehension deficits. Interestingly, when you look at the correlation between word reading and language comprehension, 
as a child becomes better at reading comprehension, those skills become more highly correlated. So they really, those skills kind of go together, but when you start to struggle, you start to see this separation that occurs, which results in this quadrant model. So this has, uh, this quadrant model has a uh, strong, you know, implications for educational practice. First, we, it tells us that we need to assess both word reading and listening comprehension in screening. And what tends to happen with the school partners we work with and what we see in the research is that we're so focused on word reading in the early grades as we should be, because that's the primary focus of instruction is to break that code for children. But at the same time, children are developing language skills. And the, what we found, we had a longitudinal study where we looked at children in fifth grade who had language comprehension deficits, who were having difficulty comprehending in fifth grade. What we did is we were able to tap into a study of daycare and look at different language skills over time. And what we saw is that even as early as 15 months, these children were showing language deficits and you could see across their lifetime, they had language deficits, but they looked like they were late emerging poor readers because language wasn't measured in the early grades. So it's not that they became poor readers, it's that we didn't test the skills that were foundational to their, to their future reading abilities. So it's really important to not only assess word reading ability, but to assess language comprehension in the early grades in our screening protocols and in our progress monitoring. Right along with that, within the multi-tiered system of supports, we need to ensure that if a child fails a screener in word reading, you know, we have the system set up where they would go then to tier two or small group instruction and then monitor their progress to see if they're then needing more individualized instruction through an individualized education plan. We need to have that same setup for language comprehension. So if a child fails a language comprehension screener, they need to go into a small group focused on language comprehension instruction and then see if they need to go on to an individualized education plan. Right now in our research, we're looking at different models uh, because it may be that language comprehension, uh, maybe you would go straight to a tier three. There's going to be a cut point where you might just go straight to tier three where you get an, an IEP because Interestingly, in comparison to word reading measures and for determining impairment, we have a very high sensitivity and specificity to determining problems with language comprehension very early in, in, you know, in kindergarten, for instance. Now, word reading problems, we know that takes a little bit of instruction to figure out who's going to have a problem and who's not. So we want to figure out you know, how they're progressing over time. But with language, because children come to kindergarten with uh, language being exposed to language, then we need to we can have a better you know, sense of of who's going to have problems and who's not. The big exception to this rule is children who are learning English as a second language. And with those children where we are doing progress monitoring to determine how they are learning English um, as they are more exposed to it. So you could picture a situation, and this is what we're seeing in our data, is that children who go on to have language comprehension problems who are learning multiple languages, they have you see more of a flat line for them in terms of English learning over time. Children who aren't going to have difficulties are picking up on English language skills over time. So uh, there are some exceptions to this rule to try to figure out you know, who's going to have a deficit and who's not. Another issue is, you know, there's not re readily available uh, tier two language comprehension interventions right now. They have to be pieced together. And we have a randomized control trial right now looking at, you know, testing out a possible uh, curriculum that can be used in tier two. So I do think there's a lot of room for improvement um, in terms of research and practice around these areas. But the key take home point is that if a child has a problem in reading comprehension and you're trying to determine how to support that child, you won't know unless you test them further and look at their word reading and language comprehension skills. So I'm asked often, you know, what do I do with this child who's struggling to comprehend text? And I say, I don't know until I look further because they could have a profile that indicates they need more support in word reading, or they could have a profile that indicates they need more support in language comprehension. And likely they'll have a profile that indicates they need support in both.